What's up, Crate Nation? Hope you're all doing well. My name is Chris Kelly with ProductionCrate.com, and I want to make a turret animation. Adrian made some cool ones for Footage Crate using Element 3D and Blender. It was inspiring, so I wanted to see if I could build my own using an IK rig inside of Cinema 4D using one of our turret models. We have a few good ones to choose from. I'll go with this one right here, Turret 3, since it has a lot of cool moving parts. If you don't know what IK rigs are, IK stands for inverse kinematics. Instead of having to move one element at a time, you can use a hierarchy control system so your objects will move based off of the IK chain, which makes animation fun and relatively easy. I'll start by importing the OBJ and drag everything out from this null. Most of the elements here I want to animate are already separated, but not all of them. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll start with this top piece here and disable all the other objects by shift alt clicking these dots and turning them off. This base piece should be a separate element, so by selecting a few polygons and hitting UY I can grow the selection. I can keep doing that until I isolate this base piece here. Then I can just right click and select the split. Now I can delete the polygons from the top turret piece so I don't have any duplicates. I'm going to start labeling this so I don't get confused later on. I get confused really easily. I find that naming things body parts helps me navigate faster so this piece here I'm going to call it the head this piece I'll call the neck and you get the idea this next piece looks like it just has two parts so I'll do the same split technique I did before I'll call this big part the main body part and these can be the shoulders sure why not robot anatomy wasn't one of my GE courses this turret looks like it can stay as one piece I'll call it the nose it's a big nose Next, we have the front leg and foot, so I'll separate out these elements too. Remember hockey's U and Y, grow the selection. You get the idea. Anything that moves, we want to separate into different elements so we can move them. That's the way we do. Here are all my elements separated up. I may break this top piece up more later, but I'm going to leave it like this for now. And make sure to save. As you're doing this, you want to save regularly. It'll save you a lot of time. All right, let's set up our hierarchy. These back legs here, I think it'll be better to ignore them completely for now. IK chains work best when you think of them as a series of hinges. These back legs have too much going on. This front leg, however, is perfect. So I'm going to start with this front foot as the first piece of my hierarchy and parent stack from there. I'll leave the head and the nose out of the hierarchy and end with the neck. This workflow can get confusing, so I'm just going to drop my back legs into a null object and disable it for now. We'll get to these in another tutorial, but they're not going to be part of the IK system. I think I can build them out with some constraints instead. We'll see. It's going to be cool. Stick with me fellas. For things to move, rotate, and function the way we want them to, we need our axis point in the right place. Switching between your front, back, sides, and top views will help you do this quickly. The hockeys are F1 through F5. I also want to use the access center tool, which you can find by going to the mesh drop down and selecting it. Let's start with the front foot. It looks like it should hinge right here in the center of this circle. Move your axis center to the center of your object by hitting execute with the axis center tool. Now the axis is centered on the object, but we want it to be centered on the hinge point. So we can hit this modify axis center tool button or the shortcut L and move it around. All right. Next, for the front legs, we want this access center in the same place right on that circle. Luckily, that circle hinge is actually part of the front legs mesh, so I'm going to teach you a cool little trick. I can select it in the points mode, change my center object on this access center tool, and hit execute. Now my object access center will jump right to that point. Pretty sweet. If I rotate around, I can see it is centered on the hinge on the X and Y, but not the Z. Don't flip out. It's an easy fix. Just select the mirrored point on the opposite side and hit execute again and voila. I like to test the rotation out to make sure everything is groovy but make sure to control Z afterwards so your rig isn't messed up. Save as you go. I'm going to speed up the rest of this process using all the same techniques I just showed you. And here are the final pieces of my IK rig with all the axis points on the hinges or center point of movement for each object all set up. Now we 
can start making our chain. Everybody hold hands. <laughs> Select the front foot object, the first object in your hierarchy, and control click the neck, which would be the last object in the hierarchy. Now go to character and select the create character IK chain from the drop down. You'll see this new null generated call neck goal. This is what controls the motion. We can see it's already working out really well if we move it around. Control Z if you move that null around and let's save this. This is where I like to also save a duplicate so I can always come back to this starting point. So I'm going to save a V2. Now I want to add the head to the rig. I don't have the head as part of my hierarchy because I want to be able to rotate it freely without moving the rig in response. I just need to center this access point with this point right here. I'll make the head the parent of the nose. That's a weird sentence. And then make the head the child of the neck. Very strange. <laughs> and save. Save again. Make sure to save. Save like you used to save when you played Super Nintendo and the system would crash all the time. That happened for anybody else? How old are you all? <laughs> now I can move my neck goal null object around and get an idea of how things are working. Not bad. Looks pretty good. To keep the top part of the turret from rotating, I can use a constraint. Select the neck object, hit shift C and type in constraint and select the rigging constraint. Choose the up option to keep the turret aligned upwards at all times. Now if I move my neck goal around, we can see it's working as intended. This is completely optional. If you want to have your turret head be able to rotate, you can just leave that off for now as well. Right now, this foot is reacting like a foot actually would, but I want it to be static like it is locked onto the ground. So instead of using a constraint, what I'm going to do is just quickly disassemble and reassemble my IK rig, starting with the leg instead of the foot. So delete the neck goal null object. We're going to generate a new one anyway. Drag the front legs out of the foot hierarchy and then select the front legs object, control click the neck object to go to character and create a new IK chain. I'm also deleting the front foot IK chain tag in case it would mess something up. I don't think it would, but be safe. Now if I move the new goal null object around, the foot stays in place. And that's all we're going to be using the IK system for in this rig. The next tutorial, we're going to touch on some different constraints to get the back legs working. Maybe we're also going to touch on some quick tips for the final animation. Hey, what do you think this turret should be named? Let me know in the comments below. Hmm. Does the Pixar lamp have a name? Is it just called the Pixar lamp? I'm going to give him some eyeballs. So <laughs> that'll give you an idea. That's a terrifying image. Let us know what we should call this turret in the comments below. That's all. I'll see you for the next tutorial. Remember to make it awesome.